All right, so hi everyone and welcome. Um, before we get started, I just want to do a little check off uh, list that I've created just to make sure everyone knows how to use the platform. So um, very quickly, during the presentation, um, I will go ahead and be using our chat box. Feel free to drop in any questions that you may have. They will be answered at the end of the presentation. So if you have your mouse, you go ahead and put that cursor over our little faces and you'll see a toolbar pop up. That toolbar will give you different options and one of them will be a chat box. So you can go ahead and click on that and a chat box so it should open. I will go ahead and um, type in a little message. So feel free to use that during uh, the presentation. I will be interacting with everyone. Um, with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I, again, I wanna welcome everyone to our monthly endo support group. My name is Jeanette Rodriguez, and I'm the program coordinator at the Riverside Medical Clinic Charitable Foundation. Um, first off, I would like to thank our wonderful sponsor, the Riverside Medical Clinic. And um, today we have a very special guest, um, a mother of three, a wife, an endo advocate, and an endo warrior herself, uh, Janelle Allen. So go ahead and take the floor. I'm going to be uh, sharing my screen. Okay, and all right, so. If you want to go ahead and just go to like the third panel or the third slide, that's fine because you already introduced me. So, <laughs> all right. Well, hi everyone. Um, my name is Janelle. I am an endo sister, as the term has been coined. I'm still fighting in the battles. Um, I am a mother of three. Um, I did not get endometriosis, fortunately, until after I had my children. Um, and for whatever reason, it just decided to pop up and say hi. I, um, I had issues when I was young. Um, I did like, you know, uh, some ovarian cysts, you know, when you first get your cycle, your body goes through all kinds of crazy things. But other than that, I was pretty normal. I had normal cycles, um, nothing really crazy. And after I had my third child, um, I decided to um, have my tubes tied. I didn't wanna have any more kids um, and I was fine. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere, my cycles started to change. They were extremely heavy, extremely painful. I was exhausted. And I was like, okay, something's not right. So I went to see my OB who delivered all three of my children. Um, she wanted to put me on birth control and I was unhappy with that. I didn't wanna be on birth control. Um, I didn't like the way it made me feel after having kids. So I said, no, I need to get a second opinion. And I found a wonderful doctor near where I live. I live in New York. Um, I'm, not, I'm about an hour away from Albany, New York. Um, and my doctor was in Albany and he did a bunch of tests and found I had a couple other things going on. I had like a slight um, uterus prolapse and I had like, you know, stress incontinence because of course my third child decided to be larger than the other two and totally destroyed my body. And when he decided to do a bladder sling, that's when he first discovered that I had endo. And if you'd like to go to the next screen, Jeanette, that would be great. <laughs> so when he did that, um, he ended up having to t remove my uterus and my fallopian tubes, but he was able to spare my ovaries and my cervix, but ovaries more importantly, because they produced the estrogen and I was young. Um, it was only, we're talking four years, so I was 32, almost 33, and obviously you still need to have estrogen when you're that young because it's more than just a reproductive hormone. It affects everything, which I did not know. It affects your hair, your skin, your sleep, weight gain. I mean, I didn't even realize that's what estrogen did. So he did that, and then, you know, it just started the cycle of, surgeries and pain and no matter what I did or what he did it still kept coming back and then the next year 
I had to have everything taken out and I was put into surgical menopause. Like it, I wasn't even able to, you know, get used to the idea like normal people do when they go through menopause, it was just gone. And then he removed everything. And then it was just surgery after surgery. And I was on hormone replacement therapy um, because at that time we didn't think that this was gonna be what it turned out to be. Um, but it ended up, I had to have, um, it, endometriosis was just everywhere in my pelvic and reproductive area. It was on the wall lining, it was on my appendix, it was on the ureters coming from my bladder. I mean, it was just crazy. And my doctor, um, the surgeon that I have used and the one that I really, really love more than life itself. And I'm very jealous for all you women who are in California because he is out there in California now. He had to leave me. Um, he told me that with endometriosis, it's an, I mean, you should, if anybody doesn't know what endometriosis is, it's, you know, your uterus has a lining, a cellular lining. And when you have your monthly cycle, it sheds and it's supposed to just go and do its thing and move out of your body. Um, with endometriosis, those cells decide to travel elsewhere and implant themselves on things that they're not supposed to. Um, for a lot of women, I mean, they don't even realize they have it until they try to have children and something's just not right. Unfortunately for me, mine is extremely painful. And that's why with me, he said, okay, this is very, very aggressive. He considered me um, stage four, which is the worst case, or worst, excuse me, worst kind of endometriosis. Um, and I cannot be on any type of estrogen at all because any little bit will cause it to just explode in there and we can't have that. So, um, but, he all, but he told me, his name is um, Dr. David Kimball. Um, he said to me, um, usually, you know, once we, usually if you have a hysterectomy and you remove everything in there, your endo should go away. Well, unfortunately for me, it didn't. But in most cases, what they start off by doing is they try to go in and they try to just remove the adhesions by themselves without taking any of your organs. Um, that's like the first step. And then there's also medications, well, there's only two medications right now that you can take that um, can stop the production of estrogen. They basically, they shut down your ovaries for a little while to see if your body can, you know, get ahead of this endometriosis. Um, but you have to have your ovaries in order for that to work. So, of course, that's not going to help me. But um, he ended up, you know, taking me off of estrogen. He said, you know... There are places that um, endometriosis can pop up. He, um, we had, I had blood tests because believe it or not, sometimes it can infiltrate your blood system. And, and because of that, I mean, your body has blood everywhere, so it can go anywhere. I was lucky it wasn't in my blood. Um, and then he also said sometimes um, it can get into the lymph nodes in your pelvic region and, you know, just keep coming back. So um, one of my... Uh, last surgeries with him, I ended up having, he removed as many lymph nodes in my pelvis area and my reproductive area that he could find um, and tested them. And of course, with my luck, they weren't, there was no endo in those lymph nodes. But um, so, and then finally, we just have come to this conclusion that for whatever reason, it is just embedded in the lining of my pelvic wall and it just keeps coming back. And we, I was also diagnosed with small fiber neuropathy. Um, and that's where, for me, some people, it's like damaged um, small fiber nerves throughout your entire body. Some people, they don't feel any pain. For me, I'm the opposite. I feel more pain than I should. So that's why for me, my endo is very, very, very painful. Um, Jeanette, if you'd like to go to the next screen, please. Thank you. So like I said, if you're not familiar, if you're new to the, the endo world, endometriosis, like I said before, it's this, those tissue cells that line your uterus, they grow outside of your uterus. They can be anywhere. Um, it can be really, really painful. It can be annoying or it could affect a woman's ability to conceive. And uh, for me, I was lucky I was able to have my children, but 
um, for some women, they, they discover they have it because they're trying to have children and nothing seems to be working. Um, the next screen, please, Jeanette. Endometriosis is more than just what they say it is. Um, the scientific, you know, name, the, this is what it is. It comes with a whole array of things. And I've been through them all. I, I mean, if you can see my screen, I mean, stressful, painful, no sleeping, frustrating. It's emotionally draining. You get angry, you cry a lot, you feel like there's no hope. It, it can affect uh, your family life. I have three kids and, you know, they don't, I mean, they understand that mom doesn't feel good, but they don't understand, you know, why I can't get up and run with them and do all the things that I used to do because I really, I don't feel well and I just, I can't. And if I do, it, I end up paying for it with my already horrible pain going through the roof. Um, I have an absolutely wonderful husband. I've been very blessed. He's very understanding and has been my rock through this, but it does affect our intimacy. Um, sexual intercourse is very painful um, for me right now due to the fact that I am not allowed to have estrogen for one and two, because I have so many issues going through there. Um, so, but you know, it's something that we just take day by day and we work through it and you know, unfortunately, you just gotta, you gotta compensate and make changes. And as long as you have somebody who's understanding, it's, it's not a, it's not a game ender. You know, there, there is hope out there. Um, next slide, please, Jeanette. <laughs> like I said, right now for endo, there's only two options. You can either take a medication or you can have surgery. That is it. And is actually really surprising to me that that is all that there is for um, endometriosis. Um, I don't know if any of you have seen like the commercials for Orlissa. That's one of those medications um, or something that's like that. It's, it's a hormone regulating medication. Basically, it can slow the amount of estrogen you have or it can stop it altogether. Um, you know, I, I think that tends to be used a lot of time for women who are trying to con conceive. They try to slow them down a little bit to stop estrogen, to slow down the growth of the endo. And then once they get to a point of where they're feeling good, then they can take them off of it and they can try and have children. Um, or like I said, surgery, which is removing the adhesions or in some cases, all of the organs that, you know, it's on. Um, unfortunately, I know there are a lot of women who have experienced endo who do not get to have children because this disease ravages their reproductive organs before they get a chance, you know, to have children. And it's very, very sad. And I, my heart goes out to them. It really does. Uh, next slide, please. All right, this is my long, long list. Um, for endometriosis, on, if you see that side, those are the things that I've tried. Um, as of right now, I, we did hormone replacement therapy taking me on it, taking me off. It didn't work. Currently right now I am on letrozole. Um, I tried it before, um, but I had, I, I, I'll explain that a little later. Um, right now I'm on five milligrams. If any of you are not familiar with what letrozole is, it's basically a drug that they give you uh, for women who have had breast cancer and it's supposed to um, lessen the chance that um, your breast cancer comes back. I do not have breast cancer. Um, my doctor wanted to try this because basically what letrozole does um, is it, even though you lose your ovaries, your body still makes a small amount of estrogen. Because if you think about men, men have a little bit of estrogen in them as well as testosterone, just like we have a lot of estrogen and a little bit of testosterone. So, and I'm, I do not remember which gland in the, or, or in the body it is, but there is something that produces a small amount of estrogen. And so now I am on five milligrams in hopes that I can get my body to stop making endo. Um, and so basically it's kind of like a Hail Mary we're throwing at, at my body right now to see if we can slow it down. I've had seven surgeries in four years for endo. Um, my roughest year, I had four surgeries in one year. Um, they were about every four months apart. And it was, it was hard. It was very hard on my body. 
Um, I did decide um, to see an immunologist, you know, someone who deals with your immune system, because sometimes when you have something, um, a lot of autoimmune diseases are tied in, obviously, with your immune system. Um, so I said, you know what, let me make sure that there's nothing going on with my immune system to see if maybe we can attack it from that way. I did have a bunch of tests done. Fortunately, my immune system is working fine, but unfortunately for my endo crisis, it's not really helping. And I tried acupuncture. It was not for me. Um, it didn't help my pain. It was, it was relaxing and I, they do, um, a lot of acupuncturists deal with Chinese herbs. I tried them. Uh, they did nothing but make me sick. Um, so I stopped and then both, um, both Dr. Kimball and another doctor that I did see who I will mention later, not the name, but where, you know, where I went to see this person, um, they suggested I see pain management, which is basically like a neurologist. They deal with pain. I did that and you can see the list of stuff that I have tried. Like, um, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of them because a lot of them are, for, a lot of them are nerve related. Um, thinking maybe if we calm my nerves down that the endo won't be so painful. Most of these made me extremely, extremely sick. I don't know if I have a sensitive stomach or if I'm just prone to, I don't, I really don't know why, but I tried them. They did not work for me not saying that they won't work for you. Um, I tried turmeric. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have heard about turmeric. It's supposed to be really good for pain and inflammation. It made me sick well, as well. Um, right now, I do have medical marijuana. Um, it started helping a little bit in the, right after I had my last surgery, which I tend to, when I have a surgery, I tend to have like one or two if I'm lucky, three months of no pain, and then it slowly starts building back up again as the endo starts growing again. Um, the medical marijuana has done wonders for my nerve pain, but it was okay. It helps a little bit with my endo pain. Right now, it's not helping at all. So I may have to look into other options. Um, you know, I really don't know. I'm trying to do the best I can and Obviously, as everybody knows, with COVID going right now, it's kind of hard to be seeing doctor after doctor after doctor. I kind of don't want to expose myself as, you know, as that much. And I'm just trying to, you know, hopefully things as they calm down, I'll have more um, opportunities to get out and about and really like find the right um, pain management regimen for me. Um, so next slide, please. Please. Thank you. Um, so this, if you've read, this is my current status. Like I said, I am on five milligrams of letrozole. Um, I have some people saying to me that I shouldn't be on it uh, for a long time because it is very hard on your body. Um, I do get a lot of bone pain and muscle and joint pain with it. But um, at the same time, we don't know how long it's gonna take for it to work for me. Um, right now, I cannot have any estrogen, none, absolutely whatsoever. I cannot give it anything to feed on. Um, at, I've moved to a gluten-free diet. I do not have celiac disease, um, but gluten-free is an anti-inflammatory diet. And, you know, endo is inflammatory in nature. It grows and, and it becomes inflamed, and that's why it hurts for some people. Um, so I have moved to gluten-free to try and reduce the amount of inflammation that I do have in my body. Um, whether it's working or not, I don't know yet. It's only been a few months. I have noticed other changes, um, better changes with being gluten-free, but so far the whole endo thing is um, still the same. But, you know, we'll see. Sometimes time will tell when, when you try new things. Um, I recently, like, I do a lot of reading and research. I try, you know, to try to attack this from all different angles for my own mental sanity and just to know that I'm doing everything I can to help my body. Um, I've read that evening primrose oil, which I do take, um, is just, I believe, is a supplement every woman should take as long as it's okay with their doctor. Um, it does everything. It helps your reproductive system. It helps... Um, your skin, your hair, your nails, everything. Um, I have read that it can help in the reproductive area as far as menstrual cycles or if you're going through menopause. So I, do, I decided to start taking that because, I mean, what could it hurt? 
it, it may benefit me. It may not help my end of pain, but it's going to benefit me um, in the long run, you know, for my skin, my hair, everything like that. Everything that when you go into menopause, everything starts to change. So anything I can help, <laughs> I will try and we'll see. You know, I just started taking that about a month ago. So I haven't really seen any big changes yet. More little changes like skin. My skin is definitely better, but we'll see. Um, and the last one, obviously, I am trying to find a better pain management plan that works for me. I am, um, like I said, hopefully as endo calms down, or endo, excuse me, sometimes you lose your brain too. As COVID hopefully calms down, I can battle um, my endo a little more strongly um, and find the right pain management person for me. And because the one I did see, I kind of disagreed with and um, so I need to find the right person. Um, next slide, please. Okay, this is um, this last panel here. This is like the most important. Um, everybody's different and I, I hope I'm not scaring you. <laughs> Just because what I'm going through does not mean this is what you're going to be going through. Like I said, everybody's endo is different. But the one major, 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 major thing that I have learned through this process is to trust yourself. You know your body better than anybody. It's your body. You know what you're feeling and you know when something is wrong. And don't let anybody tell you differently because it's going to affect the type of care. When I first started this, um, like I said, my very first doctor's appointment was with the OBGYN who delivered all three of my children. And I felt that she kind of just brushed me aside like, oh, you know, you have a heavy period, let's just put you on birth control and it'll get better. That's not what I wanted. And I left there feeling very, um, passed over and kind of deflated because I knew something was wrong because you don't go from one, ex you know, from being normal to something completely opposite and not have something wrong. There's something going on. And I actually, um, I found Dr. Kimball because uh, I was actually dropping off my son um, to preschool and one of the other mothers there um, she had um, stress incontinence, um, and but he, uh, Dr. Kimball is a, a urologist slash gynecologist slash amazing surgeon. Um, she referred me to him, and that goes along with my next, um, the next line here, find a doctor that will listen to you. He did. I explained everything to him. He took the time to, I mean, it was just about an hour of talking before we even got to like the examination part of the appointment. He, he listened to everything I said. He didn't make me feel like I was crazy for what I was feeling. He really made me feel in the beginning, he made me feel like, okay, something's going on and we will figure it out. He put me through a bunch of tests. Um, unfortunately, um, I don't know if many people know, but with endometriosis, you can't see it on a like an ultrasound or an MRI or anything like that. It's it's very sneaky this stuff. So unfortunately, the, one of the only ways that they can determine if you have endometriosis is they have to go in and look. And usually that's done laparoscopically, which is you know a minor surgery. It's not like cutting you open from navel and up. It's you know I mean it's surgery and there are risks with surgery, but that's the only way that they can find it. And um, that's, you know, that's how he did. But you need to advocate for yourself because there are, and I'm not saying that all doctors are like this, but you have some that are in eh, and some that are just, they're on it. When, um, after I had my fifth surgery, um, when I went for my post-op with Dr. Kimball, he informed me that he was relocating to California. And of course I was devastated because he's the one person you know, who st I felt like got me and truly believed what I said. And I was like, oh no. And you know, at that point after being post-op, I had felt okay. But about a month or two later, that's when it started happening again. He's all the way in California. So my husband's like, well, we need to find somebody. Did a lot of research. Um, 
and I ended up going to a hospital in Boston. Um, and I, I met with a doctor there. He, um, he didn't believe <laughs> that my endometriosis was back because he looked at my medical history. He looked at everything, path, you know, pathology reports. And he's like, well, you've had a full hysterectomy. You should not have endo. Um, but I knew that I did. So, I mean, he, he did do a bunch of tests. He did image work and he did blood work, you know, just to make sure that I was truly in menopause, which I was. There is this weird thing called phantom ovary syndrome where sometimes when they go in, they only see, um, they only take out, they take out what they can see, but sometimes a little smidge of ovary can be left over and that can be producing estrogen. And of course, if you're producing estrogen, you're feeding your endo. So that's what he thought, but I was truly, you know, I was postmenopausal. I wasn't even menopausal. I was postmenopausal. I had nothing. So he goes, well, you know, I think you need to be back on estrogen. You don't have endo anymore. It's probably just scar tissue. And I left feeling like, okay, well, maybe he's right. But at the back of my mind, I was like, I don't think he's right because it doesn't feel different. It feels the same as it always has. And I got a call from him saying, you know, we did some, you know, we, I looked at your imaging and something doesn't look quite right on one of the, the images. So I, he thought I had scar tissue twisted around something and he goes, that could be very dangerous. So he did end up doing a surgery. And he said to me, he goes, I don't think there's endo in there. He goes, but if there is, he goes, then this needs to go in the medical books. So I had my surgery there was endo in there. And instead of, you know, looking at it and going, okay, yeah, she was right. And whoa, this is really weird. This is not like the typical, you know, thing that happens with endo. He said, well, it was probably just residual endo from your previous surgery that your surgeon missed. And I was just, I couldn't believe that he said that. Like, it, I, like again, I had that feeling like, okay, you know, I did what I had to do. I, she can go and, uh, you know, I don't want to deal with this anymore. That's how I felt. So I reached out to Dr. Kimball um, in California and he called me personally and I explained what had happened because, you know, after I had the surgery in Boston, three months later, I was starting to have pain again. And he, the doctor in Boston was like, you need to go see pain management. There's nothing more I can do for you. And that's why I called Dr. Kimball. And I um, eventually down the road, I did go and see pain management. And um, I, like I said, I tried all those different kinds of drugs. I did, um, I even went so far, I did lidocaine infusions. I don't know if anybody knows what that is, but it's basically where you, you go to have an infusion. I sat there once a week for a month for four hours and I had lidocaine infused through my body, um, which did not work. And it made me tired and it was, you know, it just, it was nasty and I didn't like it and it didn't work. I did that. I did all kinds of medications. They wanted me to try this, try that. I did in hopes that maybe that, okay, maybe the Boston doctor was right. Maybe I do need to just find something for pain and it'll eventually go away. And it didn't. And they dissuaded me from trying medical marijuana. They said, oh, you know, you know, it's not going to work. It's, you know, it's better if you try one of our drugs. And if one of the drugs doesn't work, then our next step is we want to put a spinal cord stimulator in your back. And I was like, what? They're like, yeah, we can, it, you know, it's easy. You, you put it in and you can, um, you know, you have a little remote control and you can control what you need. And I, I, I literally like my mind like just blew because I couldn't even believe that someone was talking about messing with my spine when I have endo pain. And I went and I researched it more. And while I'm not saying a, I'm not, you know, a spinal cord stimulator is, is a great thing. It is, but it's more for somebody who's had like, like a, like a really severe trauma to their, like their spine, like a broken back or, you know, discs or hip, you know, that kind of trauma. It helps with that pain. And a lot of elderly people get it because they're in so much pain. It helps them move. It helps them walk. And so I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, but it's a bad thing for me. And it's a bad thing for endo pain, in my opinion. And um, I'm young, 
you know, I'm 36 right now. I'll be 37 in October. And when I was reading, you know, you wear like a little belt at night so it charges. You, you have to carry around a remote control to control it. You have to turn it off when you shower, turn it off when you swim. Um, if you do certain movements, um, like, for example, they said to me, well, if you play golf, you won't be able to play golf anymore because that certain swinging motion can move the wires that are implanted in your back. And I was thinking, like, I mean, I don't play golf, but I was like, so I literally am in pain already and everything has changed and you want me to put something in my back that's going to limit me even more? I was like, no. And I told my husband about it. He goes, absolutely not. He goes, you know, it may be simple to them, but this is your spine we're talking about. So as of right now, I don't have a pain management doctor. So like I said, I need to find one who, you know, listens to me. And I, I the, the drugs, all the medications that I tried, made me so, so sick, um, like just nauseous, throwing up like bad. And when I um, had my last surgery with Dr. Kimball that I did fly all the way to California to have because it was him and he was worth it to me, um, I actually was still on one of, um, it, was, it was called Nucinta, it's a nerve medication. And I had to stop taking that for the surgery and a week before, and then obviously when you have surgery, they give you medication. So I didn't want to like double up because I'm of the mind frame that if it doesn't work, I really don't want to stick it in my body because it's not the best for you. Um, I went through withdrawal like really bad. And I was like, nope, I'm not doing this. Like, I just don't want to do this. And then the one thing that I do have noticed with medical marijuana is that if I decide to not take it or I take more or less than I normally would on a day-to-day -day basis, I do not feel like withdrawal. Like, I don't feel any of that. So for me, that was better. Um, because I didn't want to feel like sick like that from a, medica from a medication that is supposed to be helping me. It's, it's just, I don't, that's just me. That's my per personal preference. Um, but so because I reached out to Dr. Kimball, he flat out said, he goes, listen, he goes, there was no residual endo in there. He goes, I completely took everything out. He goes, that is new growth. And, you know, he worked with me um, and I flew out um, to Pasadena, California. That's where his um, office is. He has a women's pelvic and wellness center in Pasadena, California that he and his wife run. So if any of you are looking for a doctor, they're wonderful. The staff I mean, Dr. Kimball took care, not only did he give me his personal cell phone number because I'm in New York and he's, he knows me and he knows my body and he's been in there multiple times, but he did everything for me. He set up the surgery time. He made sure that the hospital was on point and everything was going to be good. And he and I communicated and he really like he, when I got a hold of him, he was really, he was just as frustrated and upset as I was that I was still going through this. And so he's definitely a doctor if you are looking for one. Not saying that he's the only one, but he's one that I know and that I trust. He is phenomenal. And his wife is really, really sweet. I only got to meet her for a little bit. Um, but she's really sweet, and she works with him. She does surgeries with him. He does ro the robotic surgeries. Um, he's he's very, very good surgeon. Um, that is one thing the Boston doctor told me. He goes, I don't know who your previous surgeon was, but whoever he was, he was really, really good because – the inside of what you've had so much done on looks amazing. Like there's very, very minimal scar tissue. It looks really good in there, which I knew already because Dr. Kimball is a good doctor. So, you know, for anybody looking for him, he's out there. Um, my next thing is have a strong support system. Listen, <laughs> and I've been through it and I don't know if you have or you have not you will come across this. You'll come across this from people. You'll come across this from doctors. People look at you and they'll be like, oh, you have endo? Yeah, that's, that's like having period cramps, right? It's not so bad. Or, oh my goodness. You, you know, like people that I know, and I'm not saying that they're horrible people, but I've had people, acquaintances, are like, um, wow, you look really, really good. You look really good. How are things going? And I'm like, well, you know, things are still the same. And I'm still experiencing what I'm experiencing, and they say, well, well, you look good. You don't even, you can't even tell that there's anything wrong, and I, I'm like, 
you know, am I supposed to look like I'm two steps from the grave? Like I have three kids and, you know, I don't want everybody to look at me and go, oh my goodness, what's wrong with her? Like, oh God, she looks terrible. Ugh, you know, just because you don't look or act a certain way doesn't mean you're any less in pain or what you're going through is any less valid. And I want you to know that from the bottom of my heart, I really truly feel that people don't mean to be like that, but there is such a stigma on endometriosis um, that it's, oh, it's not that big a deal. Oh, well, what, you're just trying to have a, you know, a kid, you know, just get it fixed. No, that's not what it is. It is something that impacts your life everybody differently, but it does. And it, it's kind of sad that um, it's looked at that way. And I really think that because of that, there's not a lot of research. I mean, there might be research being done, but I feel that, um, I feel that, that there should be more endometriosis. I think endometriosis should be looked at differently than what it is. I think it should be changed. I really have done a lot of reading and to me, it, it kind of acts like an autoimmune disease. That's my opinion. And I've read articles where, especially articles from like the United Kingdom where a lot of doctors over there feel like it needs to be classified as an autoimmune disease. And if it does, or if it's changed, then hopefully with that will come um, more options, more options for treatment, because I feel that it's unfair that that's it. You either have, to, you either have two medications that you can take, or you have to have surgery, or you just suffer. Like that's, to me, that's not right. You know, I, you, you see all, all these medical breakthroughs on the news. I mean, people can get a face transplant, but they can't figure out endometriosis. Like, I don't understand this. It's very, very confusing to me. Um, but I think the more that us endo sisters speak out, I feel that eventually, hopefully, something will be heard and something will change. And one thing that is good about Dr. Kimball's um, center is I know they really are working towards having um, re more research done for endometriosis because I feel there needs to be. And us, us endo sisters and even us, even women who don't have endometriosis, women who, who know somebody who have endometriosis, we all have to stick together and fight for each other and be loud enough to be like, hey, you know, this is not okay. We need, we need options too. There's got to be more for us. Um, and the last slide, please. So I hope, you know, anything I said helped. Um, this is my first time doing this like a webinar. So <laughs> I apologize if I seem a little flighty or nervous, but you know, it's my first time, but I have put down my email address here. Um, if you would like to, you know, contact me, if you have like anything like you don't want to ask, you know, like in front of everybody, or you want to, you want to know more in depth of things that I've tried or anything, or just be like, Hey, you know, is it normal to feel like this? Or did you feel like this? Did you go through this? Please email me because you know, I, I feel that if you have, it's, it's hard to find somebody who understands what you're going through because, you know, not everybody is and everybody goes through things differently. So some people might need more support than others and that's okay. Um, so feel free to please, you know, contact me. I, I'll do the best I can to, you know, answer your questions or, you know, be there for you, be informative. And, 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 and if you have heard of anything or you have experienced anything or know of a good doctor or anything like that, please feel free to share with me because I'm always open-minded. I will, I will try different things in the hopes of getting better. So, um, that is it. So I guess it's question time. <laughs> Yeah, so thank you for all of that. That was uh, great. I know everyone, and you've mentioned this already, that every endo sister has their own journey that they experience. Mm -hmm. And two, three are never the same. No one is ever the same as someone else, just because your body reacts differently. Um, I did have a couple questions for you. Sure. Um, so the first question that I have is, did you know what endometriosis was before getting diagnosed? I did not. I had no clue what it was. Um, 
It was, no, I didn't know anything about it. Um, Dr. Kimball was very informative. He explained what it was. And then I, of course, good old Google. I had to go home and Google what it was. And I read it. And even when I read um, the stuff that I Googled, I, I still wasn't con I, concerned. It seemed like, okay, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a thing that happens. It seems like it's pretty common. Um, so, okay, so we'll just, you know, we'll take care of the problem. Things will be okay. I didn't really know what my journey was going to entail until I started having it. But, no, I did not know what it was. Um, so my suggestion is to read as much as you can. Um, like I said, everybody is different, so you're you're going to go through this differently, but it's best to know what's going on with your body. Research, ask, ask a lot of questions, and that way you can um, be informed. So you're not like, okay, what's going on with me? You, you want to know what's going on with you. It's it's It helps in your finding the right, you know, support system and the right, you know, doctors and medications, all that. So definitely know what it is before you, you know, go into what you're going into. Yeah, and then that there's another question that follows up to that. Um, do you have endo in your family? So is there endo history? No, so, not that I know of. Um, my mother um, had myself and my brother um, through C-section, so I'm assuming if she, and she didn't have any problem conceiving. I didn't have any problem conceiving. I was able to conceive my children with no problem. I did have very, very difficult pregnancies, um, but um, my children were born healthy. And, um, you know, I, I ended up having a, my, you know, I had my tubes tied, which was a surgery. And even then, there was nothing there yet. So, but not that I know of, no, nobody in my family that I know of has had um, endometriosis and I have a daughter and I, I hope to goodness it's not like a family hereditary thing because I hope I don't I hope I didn't pass it on to her so you know but no I did not know or I do not I'm sorry I did not have anybody that I know who had it and then you did mention that you changed your diet um, and uh, what is something that you've implemented that you feel is helpful um, Gluten-free for me, if, um, there is a lot of information um, about an, what is called an endo diet. And I read it and I was like, whoa, like it's not just gluten-free. It's like gluten-free, dairy-free, sugar-free. Like I'm looking at this and I'm going, okay, it's like, whoa, like this is a lot. Like I'm, am I literally going to be able to drink water and eat like lettuce? Like I can't, I mean, come on. Food's awesome. Like, let's just be honest. Food's just awesome. So... <laughs> So I was like, you know what, let me read a little bit more. I read, um, glute, I went gluten-free. I, well, for me personally, I don't really have a lot of dairy. Um, I was already drinking and using almond milk cause I like it. I don't know if one of my pregnancies turned me off to milk. So I haven't really been a milk person since being pregnant. Um, I don't really eat a lot of sugar. For me, I noticed I was eating a lot of carbs, which is gluten. And when I looked into gluten-free, um, now for me, um, I don't have celiac disease, so I don't have to be as strict because they can't have any gluten at all. I mean, you got to be on it with everything. I, um, you know, I do check. I try to only eat things that are gluten-free because a gluten-free diet is anti-inflammatory. Uh, inflammation is your enemy. It is what causes pain, even if it's not endo. If you've noticed, if you hurt yourself, you get a cut when that thing swells, it hurts. And it's the same thing. Um, I actually got pictures um, with Dr. Kimball for my last surgery before he took out the endo. And I actually finally got to see what it does to the inside of my body. And the endo itself is just this tiny little purple, like little nodule, but everything around it was bright red and swollen. Like it just, it was terrible. And I was like, whoa, so that's why I'm in so much pain. It's just affecting everything. And so gluten-free is anti-inflammatory. Um, I haven't noticed a change yet in my pain. Like I said, I've only done it for about two and a half, three months. Um, sometimes it takes a while for things to happen. But I have noticed that I do, I have better digestion. My skin and hair is better. So it is a really good diet. And it's not, 
you know, I allow myself a splurge every now and then, you know, because I mean, who doesn't want a nice piece of cake or, you know, you see someone having a brownie and you're like, oh my God, I want that so bad. So yeah, you know, you gotta, you gotta treat yourself every once in a while, but I have been sticking with it and, um, you know, it's worth a try. Um, or you could do, you know, maybe gluten isn't a problem for you. Maybe dairy is, um, cause the, that is inflammatory as well. Believe it or not, even though dairy is good for you, like milk when you're growing up, too much of it is bad for you. Um, I did not realize, I mean, I don't drink a lot of milk and I don't do a lot of dairy. I do love cheese, but I, I am, I do it in moderation because I know, you know, it's part of the endo diet, but you could try the, the no dairy and see if that works or try the no sugar, see how that works. I mean, that's really, really tough. I mean, I think for me, I think it's more like refined sugar, like the stuff that's, you know, like to me, there are some diets where they're like, oh, you can't eat fruit. I'm like, how is fruit bad for you? Yes, I know it has sugar, but it's fruit. <laughs> I would choose a piece of fruit over like having a cookie that, you know, that's, you know, that's what I think they mean by sugar. Um, but I think it's worth um, trying to see if it helps. Um, be, what do you have to lose at this point? At least for me, my journey, I don't have, I don't have anything to lose. So I'm willing to try different things. And that is definitely one that I've stuck with. And I think honestly, it'll probably be a lifelong um, change. Um, cause I do feel better in other areas going gluten-free. So I think I'm, it's going to be something that I stick with, um, for the rest of my life. Um, and then another question here is, do you have any at-home remedies that have helped? Maybe uh, like any teas or anything like that you, that you find do the trick? Well, when I went and saw the acupuncture, they, they did like this, um, Chinese herb thing. It was like drinking, I swear to God, I felt like I was drinking an ashtray. It was awful. Now for me, I have a very sensitive stomach. Apparently, apparently my body just can't handle certain things. Um, I no, really, I mean, as, as cheesy as it sounds, icy hot, like the, the, that kind of stuff, the Bengay, I live on that stuff. Cause I, I am always in pain with my endo, but I do notice, I don't know if it's just my situation. I do get spikes in my pain. So when that happens, you know, I feel like I'm just, ugh, I'm on the couch, but you know, I use a heating pad. Um, I use the, you know, the icy hot and actually, and one thing that I have considered um, looking into, I don't know if it's available in my area. I don't know if anybody has seen that. Um, I don't know exactly what it's called, but it's that um, where you go into like this, it almost looks like a tanning bed and they, they shoot that freezing cold, like air or whatever at you, cold. Um, and I have noticed like, cause I live in the mountains and so we have like a lot of little creeks and stuff and they're colder. I have noticed that when I do sit in colder water, things kind of ease a little bit. And I think it's because cold takes away inflammation. So I think any way you can, anything that you do for you that works, stick with it. Um, but I did have noticed that cold water, you know, um, Ibuprofen and all those things, they don't work for me. Um, so I don't take them. And because I don't feel like I should t put something in me, that doesn't work. Um, but I mean, you just do what you can do to feel good. Um, I noticed that um, sitting um, when I'm having a really, really bad pain spike is not the best. It's the pressure of sitting. Um, so laying down is better, I think. Um, when you're going through that really, really bad pain, you just, just be comfortable and um, definitely um, you do get nauseous. I mean, I get nauseous with pain. Um, so just, you know, stay hydrated. Um, there is um, a lot of people have seen like pain patches that you can put on. Um, I have tried those. Um, they helped us a little bit, but for, you know, I'm in a more of an extreme case, but they, they do, um, it's a brand called Luminous, L-U-M-I-N-A-S. Um, if you look it up on their website, they have, they're all natural pain patches. Um, and I actually use the sleep patches because I don't sleep very well. And I was, I've tried melatonin. I don't want a prescription sleep med because they are, ugh, they scare me. Um, so, and I don't do like the simply sleep, um, but it's an, it's like a little circle patch that you stick behind your ears at night and they have improved my sleep dramatically, like great, but they, that company also does a pain patch. 
Um, they're a little more on the pricey side, but they're all natural and they use like energy medicine in them. So it's not like drugs. So, you know, not like a, like a pain patch, not like, like a fentanyl patch, like that is like a major pain patch. It's not like that. So that may be something that somebody could try too, because they might work for you just because they didn't help me a little bit. Doesn't mean that it won't help you. And, um, so yeah, it's luminas.com, L-U-M-I-N-A-S.com. Um, and I would try that too as well because it might help. And it's something that you can keep on. It's one patch, like they work up to 24 hours. So it's not like, you know, it only works for like a couple hours like medication and then you have to do it again. No, it's supposed to work up to like 24 hours. So that's, I think in the long run, that's pretty good, you know, pretty good bang for your buck when you can have something that lasts that long for you. So, you know, that's something to try. Thank you. Um, I have one more question. If there are any sure. questions that you would like to ask, now is the time to put those in the chat box before um, we end today. But so the last question here is, how do you take care of your mental health? You are going to go through ups and downs. Um, it's normal. Endo is very frustrating. It's, I've, I've been through every emotion that you could possibly get. I've had them. I've been severely depressed. Um, actually when I had my last surgery, I was actually at the heaviest I've ever been. Um, after I had my surgery and I, my notice, my pain started coming back again. And it was actually right after, I don't know when everybody's schools shut down for COVID ours did in March. And I just looked at myself and I was just, I was depressed. I, and I'm a stress eater. So if I'm depressed, I want that bag of chips. I want that, you know, snacking. And I was just very unhappy with myself. And luckily for me, I have a good husband who loves me no matter what. Um, and he would never say anything or do anything to hurt me. But I looked at him and I just started crying. He goes, what? I was like, I feel awful. And he goes, okay. He goes, well, let's figure it out. I can't exercise. I used to exercise a lot. I used to like lift weights and do cardio and I love to dance. Um, I love to dance and it kills me that I can't do that because for me, it hurts too bad. Like if I go on a hike with my husband and my kids, I'm paying for it at night because after doing a lot of movement, my body's like, nope. But you know, I don't think it's fair that I don't get to do those kinds of things, but do what you need to do and w whether it's what no you know like normal or weird who cares you're gonna go through ups and downs and as long as you have a support system that allow and go through those up and downs don't feel like you have to keep it in because if you and that's what I would do a lot I wouldn't tell my husband how he was feeling I would be mean and I mean, actually, you know, like that, like it was bad. Like, and he's like, what is wrong with you? It's because I didn't let it out. Have that good cry. Take 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes or an hour, whatever you need and be by yourself. Do anything and everything to make yourself feel better because endo is a physical thing. It affects your body physically, but what you're going through physically affects you mentally and if that isn't strong it's going to make your journey all the more worse so you really need to just do anything i um i take time for myself uh, my husband lets me take time for myself he knows that sometimes i just need to take 10 15 minutes and i need to just go lay down in bed by myself and just decompress because i do have three kids my oldest daughter my oldest child is my daughter she's 12 and then i have a 10 year old and an almost eight year old so there, I have little kids at home and it gets, you know, dealing with just normal life. That's stressful enough. And then you're dealing with this on top of it. So I, my best bet is to not leave it inside, let it out in any way that is good and healthy. You know, I've had people say, man, I don't, man, it's amazing to me. You're not an alcoholic. Well, how would being an alcoholic benefit me? It's not, it's just one more thing against me. Do something healthy for yourself whether it's talking to somebody, taking time for yourself, anything, meditation, yoga, shoot, dancing, who, whatever you can do, do it. Because the stronger you are up here, the more in, in the fight you are. 
And that's going to benefit you better if you are okay up here to fight for your body because you're the one that has to fight the hardest for your body to get better. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. Um, and I think that's a, a great note to leave off on um, is that just always stay strong. Um, so I will go ahead. I don't see any questions in the chat box. Um, so we will go ahead and close out. Um, if you missed some of the beginning of this webinar, um, we will have it posted on our page. Um, in the meantime, if there's any other um, concerns that you might have, we also have other videos on there. I'll go ahead and add our, um, our website. So if you want to go ahead and check out other content in the meantime. Um, if, if not, then uh, I think that's pretty much it. I want to thank you for coming on here with us. Um, you didn't seem nervous at all to me. I thought you did great. Um, <laughs> well, I, yeah. think I've gotten, I think I've gotten better at it because I substitute teach. And let me tell you what, kids are like the worst critics ever. So you have to learn <laughs> to speak and speak well. So. <laughs> Yeah, um, no, but you did great. And I want to, again, just thank you for coming on here. Yes, and your yes, story anytime. With us. anytime. Um, yes, thank you. So for, like I said, for anyone that is interested in maybe seeing other other content, feel free to visit the website. I've added it to our, our uh, webinar chat. So with that said, I want to thank you all for joining us again. Um, thank you for coming on here with me. And I hope everyone has a great rest of the day. And uh, thank you for joining. Yes, thank you guys. All right. Bye. Bye.